Sa ngalan po ng Feeling Best Community Christian Fellowship, pinapaabot po namin ang aming pakikiramay sa mga mahal sa buhay po ng ating minamahal na si Sister Neneng. Nowadays, Facebook is becoming like an obituary. Before, we don't usually read it in the newspaper. We avoid that section. However, we are forced to see it because it appears on our Facebook timeline. Dumadami po yung mga profile pictures na may kandila po. At nararanasan po natin na sa isang araw, marami po tayong ginagawang pag extend ng condolences ng ating pakikiramay. And during these times, it is tempting to despair, to lose hope. Because now, COVID statistics have a face. A face of a friend, a face of a relative, at ngayon nga po ay si Sister Neneng. Kaya sinasabi po, tao, hindi numero. It is so tempting to despair. But because He lives, because the Lord lives, there is hope even in grief. Because He lives, there is hope in the midst of our grief. Noong unang palahon, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. At ang sabi po niya sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Pasinin po natin na hindi po tayo pinagbawalang magdalamhati. Hindi po natapos sa that you may not grieve. Kundi ang sabi po, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Bagamat tayo nagdadalamhati, sa gitna ng ating pagdadalamhati, ay meron pa rin po tayong pag-asa. Ito pong sinabi ni Pablo, we do not want you to be uninformed brothers, was because, the background of the Thessalonian believers were pagan. And because of that, wala pa silang masyadong alam when it comes to the truth of the resurrection. And Paul said that we do not want you to be uninformed. We do not want you to be ignorant, brothers. And it is not just providing information, but Paul gave them a revelation. Una po, Sinabi rito na for those who are in Christ, death is like sleeping. Tatlong beses po na binanggit dito na sinabi ni Paul sa verse 13 about those who are asleep. Sa verse 14, God will bring with Him those who have fallen asleep. And then sabi po sa verse 15 that we who are alive at the time of the Lord's coming, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. And then we know that it's a figure of speech because pagdating po rito sa verse 16, sabi ni po ni Paul, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Yung pong figure of speech describing death as sleep, is only reserved for those who died in Christ, who before they died have accepted the Lord as their Savior. If you read the Bible, that figure of speech, sleep referring to death, ay ginagamit lamang po for believers who have died. Kapag po hindi mana ng palataya yung namatay, ang sinasabi lang ng Bible, sila ay namatay. And it is not talking about the manner of death na parang nat namatay sa pagkakatulog. Kasi po, when 
Stephen, the first martyr, was killed by stoning, a very gruesome way of dying. The Bible described him as going to sleep. Kaya po, this is a revelation of comfort because wala naman sa ating natatakot matulog. We look forward to sleeping. Kung kaya po ang kamatayan ay hindi po kinakatakutan dapat ng mga mana ng palataya sapagkat death because of the Lord is not a period. It's not the end. Death is going to sleep because He lives there's hope in the midst of grief. And then Paul said that the basis of our hope was because of the resurrection of the Lord. Ang sabi po niya, the reason why even if we are grieving, we still have hope. Sabi po niya sa verse 14, For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with Him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Because He lives, there's hope. Even in the midst of our grief. Na kahit po tayo lumuluha, nagdadalamhati, nananangis, mayroon po tayong kapayapaan, mayroon po tayong pag-asa, sapagat ang Panginoong Jesus mismo ay hindi na natiling patay. Ang kanyang muling pagkabuhay ay katiyakan po na may muling pagkabuhay para sa mga nanampalataya sa kanya. His resurrection is very crucial. Without the resurrection, the death of the Lord will just like be any other death. Without the resurrection, there will be no second coming. Kaya po mahalaga na manampalataya tayo hindi lang sa kanyang kamatayan, kundi sa ating muling, kundi sa kanyang muling pagkabuhay para po tayo magkaroon ng katiyakan ng buhay na wala hanggan. Because according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if we confess with our lips that Jesus is Lord and believed in our hearts that God raised Him from the dead, we will be saved because He lives. Because He lives. Alam po ninyo, yun ang ating assurance that this is not a separation. Mari po ang pansamantala, nawalay po sa atin si Sister Neneng. But if we, like her, have the Lord in our hearts, if we have put our faith in the Lord as our Savior, if we have believed in Him alone for salvation, then this is not a separation. There will be a reunion. Sa pagkatang sabi nga po rito, we will always be with the Lord with them. Because the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive at the coming of the Lord will be caught up together with them. And we will be with the Lord forever. We will always be with the Lord. And that's our comfort. That's our encouragement. Kaya nga po Paul ended his exhortation with, Therefore, encourage one another with these words. It is because he lives. The resurrection gives us hope even in the midst 
of our grief. Because He lives, there's hope even in grief. You know, in one time po, I remember, in our house, may nabasag po na vase. Pero yung pagkakabasag niya, isang part lang. So, pwedeng itatalikod mo lang, pwede mo pa rin siyang i-display. And one time, nakita ko, nakaharap siya na nakalabas yung basag. And so, I told my son, balik ka rin mo. But my son said, no dad, let it be. Because there's beauty in brokenness. There's beauty in brokenness. Sabi ko, ang galing nun ah. I even posted about it on Facebook. And then later on, when I was talking about it with my son, I said, son, ang ganda ng sinabi mo. Sabi niya, hindi, tayo, tinatamad lang ako, balik na rin. But it's true. There's beauty in brokenness. Hindi lang po ito something positive just to pep us. Kundi katotohanan po ito. There is beauty in brokenness because He lives. Alam po ninyo in Japan, meron pong tinatawag na kinchugi. Na ang ibig sabihin po, golden joineries. Kinagawa po nila, kapag may nabasag na vase or cup na mamahalin, Pinagdudugtong po nila using gold or silver. Hindi lang po glue. Ang nagiging glue, yung ginto. And because of that, the vase becomes more expensive. We will experience brokenness because a dearly beloved passed away. Mahirap po sa atin yun. But, it is our assurance from the Bible that even in our brokenness, we will experience the beauty of the comfort of the Lord. But that's not the end of it. Sabi nga sa infomercial, but wait, there's more. When the Lord returns, hindi lang ho tayo patched up, broken vase. Kasi kahit na ho, may ginto, broken pa rin yun. So, balit sa Panginoon po, the broken vase will be made whole. Because we will be resurrected. The corruptible will become incorruptible. No more sickness. No more weakness. No more grief. No more pain. No more tears. Let me tell you, even now, even before the resurrection, Sister Neneng is more alive than ever because she is with the Lord. And we could look forward to a joyful reunion with her if we have also received the Lord that she received so that we will really experience this truth that because He lives, there's hope even in the midst of of our grief. May God comfort us with these words. Tayo po ay manalangin. Lord, we pray for the family of our dear sister Neneng. It is very painful. You know the death of our grief. It is very hard, Lord, to grieve during this time of a pandemic because it's not the usual way that we mourn. Maging ang aming pagluluksa ay hindi po karaniwan. Sa lip na madama namin ang yakap ng isa't isa, comforting presence of each one sa lamay. We have to content ourselves with a virtual wake, a virtual memorial service that deep within our hearts we are so grieving 
But Lord, we thank you that there's hope even in the midst of our grief. And our hope is anchored in the truth that once in her life, our dear sister Neneng has accepted you as her Savior. And because of that, we are assured that she is now joyful, peaceful, without pain, without sickness in your glorious presence. And Lord, as believers like her, we look forward to reuniting with her in your presence. And I pray for those who wanted to have the same hope. I pray that they would also receive you as their Savior, just like what Sister Nenning did. I pray that from their hearts, they would say, Lord, I want to have the same hope. I am a sinner. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I accept you. I put my faith in you as my Savior. Thank you for your assurance that whoever believes in you will have eternal life. Lord, I pray for the family and everyone who loves Sister Neneng that in the midst of their grief that you would bind them closer to you and to each other, that you would draw them closer to you and to each other, that you would assure them of your loving presence kapag tinatamaan po sila ng kalungkutan, ng pangungulila, katagpuin niyo po sila. And may they experience the peace that passes all understanding. Use each one also as a channel of your comfort. We thank you because we have hope in the midst of this grief because you live. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you. Amen.